Amen. Thank you in advance for giving. We appreciate you and your faithfulness. And it's made a huge difference. And we're very grateful to God for all that the Lord does with your tithe and offerings. I'm excited today. I get to preach. I get to share and continue the message. Uh, part of our series, A Heart for the House, just the other day. Uh, well, for the first time, uh, Pastor Dan Sr., presented the series, A Heart for the House, and uh, really shared about all the great things that God has done, all the great things that the Lord has moved on our behalf, and the fact that the church is walking in divine favor, and things that seemed impossible were just lowered and paved out and dealt with, and, and God worked in some amazing ways. And then uh, last week, Pastor Danny Jr. preached he talked about the tabernacle, and he talked about the presence of God. And then Pastor Danny Jr. reminded us that the presence of God went from, from the tabernacle to the temple to, to you and I, to, to us, to you and me, because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, so that the Spirit of the Lord is at work in each and every one of us, and God's presence is being made known. So it's really awesome and really wonderful to, to kind of take that journey so today, I want to pick up with uh, that same message, that same idea in a heart for the house this morning. And so talking about a heart for the house, what I want to connect to is the fact that the heart for the house has everything to do with your family, has everything to do with my family, has everything to do with the, the families in the city of Santa Ana, has everything to do with the families in, in California, Southern California and beyond. The heart for the house is really about what God is doing, not just here, but here and beyond. It's so exciting. Just this morning, I turned on my cell phone and I was flipping around on Facebook and I found a, 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 some pictures by Brother Yoa. The men's ministry had gone off, picked up the offering last week, Sunday. They're there this today. They're in, they're in Baja, Mexico, finishing the construction project on a church there with Pastor Tony. So it's just really exciting to see what God is doing in real time right here and right now. And how many know that at Dembo Galvarios, we at Dembo Galvario, we love families, man. We believe in families. We're excited about what God's doing in families, and we're very dedicated to what the Lord is doing because we know that families are essential. Families are essential. They're essential not just to the church, but to society as a whole. Families are essential not just to society, but to the world as a whole. And they're essential to life and living. They're essential to our health and our well-being. And you know what? Whether, whether, whether you're single or married, we're all a part of a family. We're all a part of extended families. And honestly, our families aren't perfect, but then again, neither are we, amen? But they're still our families, and we still love them, and we're still excited, we still appreciate what God is doing in and through families. I love what the Lord is doing here at TC in terms of families. we got a couple of young couples that are getting married, and, and one of those is uh, this month. We have uh, actually two of them. Uh, one of those is Otto and Bianca. Uh, give it up for Otto and Bianca getting married this month, November. We also have Evelyn and Erwin getting married this month in the month of November. It must be a good, 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 way to, good way to give thanks. Amen. And I was meeting with Erwin and Evan. We, we were talking about the, uh, 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 the love of God and how the God loves sons and daughters and how much God loves us as sons and daughters and how we are to love one another and model out, out that love as sons and daughters. And in the process of, of sharing with them just the other day, it occurred to me that, you know, when you love somebody, uh, uh, you, you, you can't say that you love them without giving something. And so I'm meeting with this couple who's about to get married, and I say, in the process of, when, when you say you love somebody, you can't say you love somebody without giving something. You can't say that you, can't say that you love your spouse without giving of your time, talent, and treasure. How many husbands know what I'm talking about? You can't say that you love your kids without giving of your time, talent, treasure, playing and hanging and doing things with them, connecting with them at their level. That's one of the things I love with uh, Josiah and I. Sometimes we'll walk a dog and Josiah will play soccer and, and we have great talks and it's a wonderful time. We can't say that we love someone without giving of ourselves, without giving of our lives. And how many know that same principle applies in our relationship with the Lord? 
We can't say that we love God and that, and that God is our all in all and that we're living our lives for Him without spending time with Him. We can't say that we love the Lord and, 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 and not make church on Sunday morning a priority. Come on, somebody. You can't say that we love the Lord, man, and, and, and not have a devotional, not be getting into our Word, not, not commit Scripture to memory, not download some podcasts and, and see what God wants to speak to us through these other vehicles, these other avenues. So we really can't even say that we love the Lord and, and, and not spend time with Him, but we also can't say that we love the Lord and not tell somebody about Him. We can't say that we love the Lord and not share our love for the Lord with others. You know, when you're dating and you're in love and, you, and, and, and you're, 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 you're going out with somebody and you've come to that place and that point where you, you realize, man, this may be it. And this you're going to take it to the next level in your relationship. And you love that person so much, you're all on Facebook, boy. You're announcing it, man, in a relationship. How many, how many see those posts, man? And you get like a 200 likes, boy. You know, everybody's so happy, boy. Yeah, God answers prayer, amen. That's what they're saying. <laughs> no, 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 no. The, uh, uh, the Lord was at work all the time, brother. It was just a matter of time. The, uh, so what happens is when we're excited about our love for someone or something, we begin to share that with people. You know, it's the same way in our love for the Lord. It's the same way that principle applies in our love for the Lord. So this morning... As we talk about the heart for the house, you know, the heart for the house is really not just about our love for God, but it's also about our love for God's people. It's not just about our love for God and God's people and what God's doing here, but it's also about our love for God and God's people and what God's doing around the world in and through our church. And then it's not just about, it's, it's not just about our, our love for God and God's people, but it's also about the place that is our house. It is the place where we congregate. It's the place where we meet. It's the place where we gather together. It's the place where people get saved and set free. It's the place where people get delivered. It's the place where, where people get radically saved and they find a new hope and a new future and a new destiny it happens right here in our house so this love for the Lord is this heart for the house campaign is really about this love for the Lord this morning I want to turn want to turn your attention to a powerful man a powerful man of God he makes a powerful statement and it has everything to do with your family and my family it is a statement that still rings true today open your Bibles Open your Bibles to the book of Joshua, chapter 24. Open your Bibles to the book of Joshua, chapter 24. Joshua, it's a book about a man that had served the Lord and served alongside of a great leader. And it was his time to lead, and he's been leading, and God's been doing all these great things in his life. And in, and in Joshua, chapter 24, something very interesting takes place. Something really powerful happens. Joshua's basically, they've, they've done a lot of, uh, they've had a lot of victories, they've had a lot of battles, they've won a lot of uh, 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 overcoming challenges, and, and they've had a lot of wins in their lives and, and in their leadership. And there comes a point in time in the book of Joshua where, where he basically calls the people together. And in Joshua chapter 24, we're going to start at verse 14, but I want to I wanna break verses 1 to 13 down for you. Here's what happens. Joshua just finished telling the family story. Joshua calls the people together and he tells the family story. He talks about how God chose Abraham, how God selected Abraham, how God elected Abraham to be used by the Lord greatly, how God gave Abraham descendants when it looks like it was impossible. God made the impossible possible. God blessed him through a family seed and gave him descendants. The Bible says that, that Joshua said how, how God guided them and led them and provided for them, that even when there was a family, and the world's falling apart and people can't find where to go what to do and how to get out of it God made a way of escape and they found themselves in Egypt and then Joshua says when they were in Egypt that the Lord heard their prayer and he delivered them from Egypt he didn't just bring them out of a bad place he didn't just bring them out of a out of a bad space out of a hood out of the barrio, out of out of all this violence that was happening but he delivered them from the people that were trying to attack them he delivered them from the people that didn't want to quit, didn't want to let go, didn't want to stop coming after him, that he set them free once and for all from the Egyptians. 
Joshua begins to remind the people of God about everything that God has done. And then Joshua said, the very land that you're standing on is the land that God gave. Joshua says, you're here right now today. You are alive today. You exist today. You have what you have because God gave it to you. So Joshua was like breaking down. He's just telling the family story. He's telling the story of faith. He is the leader of leaders. He's the leader of the people. And he's, and he's, saying, he's telling people, here's what God's done. Here's what God is doing. Here's how we are where we are today right here, right now. That's what he's saying. You know, it's kind of like he's in church on Sunday morning, right? There's like a general assembly. Basically, he's saying to everybody, he's saying, hey, man, God saved you. God set you free. God healed your heart. God healed your family. God restored your marriage. God reconciled you to your kids. God, God, God blessed the mess that you left behind and brought something good out of it. God did a great work in your life. You are alive today. You have investments today. You have a career today. You have a job today you have a future today because the Lord gave it to you come on somebody say amen that's what he's saying that's what he's saying and look at what happens in verse 14 this is Joshua talking to the people so here's what he's saying he said now here's what I want you to do here's what I want to challenge you about so here's what Joshua says in verse 14 let's, let's start right there verse 14 Joshua says, so fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River. And in Egypt, serve the Lord alone. Verse 15 says, but if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods of your ancestors that served beyond the Euphrates? Or will you be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? So basically, Joshua's saying, hey, man, there must have been some folks struggling in the midst of them. They had this blast from the past, right? They had some old habits, old ways of thinking, old ways of living, old ways of treating one another, old ways of responding to God that kept lingering in, that kept coming back, that kept revisiting them, that kept sticking up their ugly heads. So Joshua is calling on it. He says, choose today whom you're going to serve. And the reason, I, I love what Joshua is doing because he's, he, there's no doubt in his mind. Look at what he's about to say. Look at what he's about to do. Joshua turns the corner here. So then Joshua says, Joshua is basically saying, hold on a second here because right now, right now, it's not going to be about you. It's going to be about me. Here's what he's going to say. Here's what he does. Here's, here's what the leader does. Here's what the leader of the home does. Here's what daddies do. Here's what, here's what papas do. Here's what grandpas do. Here's what uncles do. Here's what theos do. Here's what cousins do. Here's what people who love one another do. They begin to make statements like this. And here's what he says. He says, but as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. That's what he says. That's what he says. Right? Just a few days before election day. Come on, somebody. He says, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what comes. Pasa lo que pasa, venga la que venga. It doesn't matter. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what he says. Come on, somebody, say amen. Amen. He's just keeping it real. You see, he's making a radical declaration. He's making a declaration that not only impact his house, it impacted all the other houses around him. He's making a declaration that it wasn't just about his house. It was about a declaration he made in his home that helped all the other homes get some alignment, get some direction, get some vision. Because they saw the man of God who had suffered, who had fought, who had given, who had served in his whole life in ministry and service. Say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what he says. It was about impacting everyone around him. It was about impacting the future of a movement that was taking place. Look at what happens. 
he refuses to move, he refuses to turn, he refuses to go with the, with the peer pressure or with the challenges, he refuses to, to turn back to the old ways of living in Egypt and the old gods, he refuses to, to go along with the Amorites and the people that live around them, he refuses to be swayed, he, he's got this unbreakable, unmovable commitment to serve God no matter what. Joshua is basically saying, it's not time to quit. It's time to step up. It's not time to go back. It's time to move forward. He's saying, it's not time to, to let up, but to dig in and go even deeper in the things of the Lord. You know, a lot of times, you know what's unfortunate, man? Most of the time, people quit right before the miracle. Right? Most of the time, people quit and they'll give up right before the miracle, not realizing that if they just hung in there and stuck it out, the miracle was already on the way. Amen? Ready to be manifested. Verse 16. Let's go to verse 16. Look at what it says. Verse 16. The people replied, we would never abandon the Lord and serve other gods, for the Lord our God is the one who rescued us and our ancestors from slavery in the land of Egypt. He performed mighty miracles before our eyes, and as we traveled through the wilderness among our enemies, he preserved us. It was the Lord who drove out the Amorites and the other nations living here in the land, so we too will serve the Lord, for he alone is our God. In verse 18, so the people are acknowledging, yes, you're right, God did do that. God was on our side. God did move. God did answer prayer. God did show up in all these ways. That's what he said. That's what the people are saying. They're, they're responding. They're realizing that all that they have and, and all that they possess and where they're at today is because God has provided for them, is that God has brought this about. And look at what takes place in verse 19 and 20. Then Joshua warned the people, you are not able to serve the Lord for he is a holy and jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. And if you abandon the Lord and serve the other gods, he will turn against you and destroy you, even though he has been so good to you. Here's what Joshua is saying. Man, you don't get to play both sides of the fence. That's what Joshua is saying. Joshua is telling the people, you don't get to play both sides of the fence, man. You don't get to go with the Amorites one day and the Lord the next day. You don't get to go with the old ways and then, and then forsake the new ways. And that God is a jealous God. God is asking you to be devoted. God is asking you to be committed. God has blessed you and provided you. And God, there's more to come. But God wants you to be faithful and loyal. That's what Joshua is saying. That's what he's saying right here. He's just keeping it honest. Look at what happens in verse 21. But the people answered Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. You are a witness to our decision, Joshua said. You have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, they replied. We are witnesses to what we have said. There was a confirmation there between Joshua and the people. The people were acknowledging, no man, no man, we are all in. No man, we are keeping it real. No, brother, we are telling the truth. We are in it to win it. We are with you. We want to serve the Lord too. We want to do what God wants. We want to fulfill God's plan. We want to fulfill God's purposes. We want to see God's, God's kingdom come and God's will be done. We want to serve the Lord. That's what they're saying. And in verse 23, I want to focus on verse 23 for just a few minutes. Look at this. Look at what happens. In verse 23, Joshua says this. He says, destroy the idols among you. Destroy the idols among you and turn your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. Everybody read that with me out loud in the living. Look, look at what it says. Let's read that. Started with destroy the idols. Ready? One, two, three. Destroy the idols among you and turn your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. So I'm reading this, right? And I'm studying the scripture and I'm looking at this. And, and I, I, I love the part where he says, turn your heart to God. 
Turn your heart to the Lord, man. Turn away from these things and, and, and turn away from who God is. Turn away to your Savior, to your Redeemer, to your Deliverer, to your Provider, to your Healer. Turn away to the one who has called you by name and has a purpose and a plan for you. But you know what occurred to me? Before that, he says, and destroy the idols. Destroy the things that are competing for your love. So destroy the things that are competing for your devotion, for your allegiance, for your servitude. Control, destroy the things that are trying to control you and keep you from going all out for God. That's what he's saying. He's saying, man, set those things apart. Set those things aside. Get rid of those things. Stay away from those things. Don't have anything to do with those things that would try to exalt themselves above who God is in your life. Destroy the idols, is what he says. Destroy the idols among you and turn your hearts to the Lord. Come on, somebody say amen. He said, turn your hearts to the Lord. Give your life to Jesus, man. Give your life to Jesus, mom and dad. Young couple, married couple, turn your heart to the Lord fully. All in, all the way. And allow for God to move mightily and powerfully on your behalf. Allow for God to move supernaturally in your marriage, in your finances, in your workplace, in your parenting skills, with your kids, with your other family members, even, even, even help your neighbors start liking you. Come on, somebody, say amen. You know, we have a, we have a life group at our home, and Roland leads a junior high life group at our home, and they, we kind of ended the season with the, they went roller skating with the kids from Stan's life groups. And uh, they met at the roller skating rink, and and it's interesting. So so here we are, man. We're 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 living for Jesus, man. We're serving the Lord. We're loving God. We've made a declaration. My wife and I have put our stake in the ground that we in our home will serve the Lord, no matter what we're doing or where we're at or or, or where we've been. This is it. We're we're in it to win it, right? And, and part of that is a part of embodying the mission and vision of our church. So if the vision of our church is to turn hearts to God and to turn hearts to one another, turning hearts to one another has everything to do with the life group ministry. And so here we are with the junior high ministry. We've led some and we lead a, a leadership life group, but we wanted to do something right here in our home. So we did something in our home and we, we were thinking and we were looking around. We said, hey, there are all these junior high kids. So we have a junior high life group. We got one kid, Buddhist, another kid uh, uh, in the shrines and all this other stuff. And we got another kid doesn't know what he is, right? Uh, another kid who, who, who'd like to claim something he doesn't know what it means. And, and, and these junior high kids, we went around and we told their parents, would you allow for your kids to come to our house for a Bible study? <laughs> and they said, is it your house? Said, yeah. I said, yeah, for sure. Go ahead. So we got these little kids in there. First time Roland showed up, boy, he looked shocked, boy. He's like, uh. Me and my house in Huntington Beach, we will serve the Lord. Me and my wife leading worship at Temple Calvario, we will serve the Lord. Come on, somebody. Me and my babies, my son's already in ministry. He's already serving. He loves it. We will all serve the Lord. Can somebody say amen? Temple Calvario. This house is meant to be a blessing to your house to help you fulfill that vision. Because we want to see you in your home serve the Lord too. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. That's what the heart for the house offering is about, amen? It's about our house, your house. It's about the houses here in the city, in the county. It's about what God's doing here. So here's what I'm going to do before I wrap it up. And uh, I, w I just want to share something because I want to talk about this offering for a few minutes here. I want to talk about this offering really quick. This is a special offering that we're asking 
for you to join us with and on uh, November 20th, Sunday morning, November 20th. And we have a wonderful Thanksgiving service, man. We're just going to be celebrating God's goodness, God's grace, God's faithfulness. The way that the Lord is blessed almost going to be like covenant making. You know what I mean? We're going to be thanking the Lord. We have a response to the congregation and worship and prayer and, and just celebrating all that God's done. So this heart for the house offering, look at what it looks like. Remember, when we, when we say we love somebody, we got to give of ourselves. When we say we love the Lord, we're going we're gonna to give of ourselves. When we say we love what God's doing, we're going to contribute to it. We're going to support it. We're going to bless it. We're going to make a declaration. We're going to make a statement. We're going to take a stand for what God's doing. And we're inviting everybody to join us in that. So look, here's, here's what I want to share. When we talk about this special offering, I want you to just... Uh, Prepare yourselves, because I know that already when you came in this morning, you received an offering envelope and it said a heart for the house. Am I, is, that, is that right? Is I'm, 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 I'm not mistaken. Levi, can you give me one of those envelopes, Levi? So when we talk about this special offering, we talk about the heart for the house, here's something that I want you to know. Whether you're single or married, whenever we give an offering to the Lord, here's something that it does. Here's something that it does. When we, when, we, when, when we give, it brings clarity to what's really important in our lives. When we give, it brings clarity to what's really important, to what we're really saying, to what we really mean. It brings clarity to our level of commitment according to whatever it is that we have within our ability to do so. So when we give, man, it brings clarity to your goals, to your priorities, to your values, and it forces you to set aside everything that competes with your number one. When you give, it forces you to set aside everything that completes with your number one. Whether you're married or single, learned it as a young man and still learning it as a married man, when you give, it forces you to, 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 to declare and, and carve out a space and begin to lift up your numero uno. And what we're saying is, in this Heart for the House offering, we're asking you to give. We're asking you to prioritize. We're asking you to, to set the things aside that are competing and to make a sacrifice about what we believe God is doing right here, right now, turning hearts to the Lord turning hearts to one another. When you give, it allows you to do so. It allows you to say that. It allows you to see that. It allows you to declare that. And it allows for everybody else to see it. You know what I love about, there's this prayer movement. There's this prayer movement. And we went to this prayer movement. It was called The Call. And it was at the L.A. Coliseum. They filled it up with thousands and thousands of people. It went all day. And it, it was absolutely amazing. The leader of that prayer movement, his name is Luingo. And he's been praying for revival. He's been crying out to the Lord for revival. He, he sets up these prayer conferences and thousands of people come. It's multi-denominational, multi-regional. He's got them all over the nation. He's still going. You want to know how he got it going? He sold his house. He believed so true, so greatly. He believed so strongly in what God wanted to do in terms of starting a revival and lighting a fire that would spread across the nation and the world that a hundred years after the Azusa Street revival, he believed God would do it again. And, and, he, and he believed so strongly that he, he sold his house and he used that money as part of a down payment to purchase, to rent out the L.A. Coliseum for a whole day for all the time that they needed it. And when he did that, it began to inspire many others around them to do the same. Luingo. Luingo. You know, when honestly, when I saw that, I was amazed. Honestly, when I saw that, I was shocked. And I thought, wow, what a declaration. What a statement. And I went to that prayer gathering. My wife and I went to that prayer gathering. We, we, we traveled with some people from TC and we met up with some others there. We were there at that prayer gathering and God was just moving so powerfully. So when you give, it brings clarity to what you're saying is absolutely essential and numero uno in your life. Number two, here's what, what happens. When you give as a married couple, as a, as a family, 
when you consider this heart for the house offering, when you consider this, when you give as a family, here's what happens. And I, I kind of love what takes place here because when you stop to think about it, whether you're married, you're going to get married, you're about to get married, you've been married for a long time. When we give, here's what it does. It's, it unites us in our vision for the home. It unites us. Because uh, when you have the same vision, you will stand no matter what comes, no matter what the winds and the waves are. When your vision is built on Christ, and when your vision is built on building God's house, God will build your house. Can somebody say amen? When your vision is built on building the kingdom, on God bringing you together, not just to have a big house, a career, and education, and make good money, but to be a blessing in advancing the cause of Christ. When you build God's house, God will build yours. The blessing will flow and be manifested in all kinds of ways. So when you give, you're uniting in vision as a married couple and as a family. And you know what happens? You know, you know what's, what's interesting? I was talking to the couple that I was counseling and premarital counseling. They're about to get married uh, like the others that I met. Here's something that occurred to me in the process of talking about it. I said this. I said, hey, you know what? It's absolutely essential that you have a, one, a singular focus and a singular vision for your marriage and for your home and for your way of life. Why? Because you know what division means? Division means two separate visions doesn't it you see Mary struggling you see Mary's that marriages have a problem you see couples not able to hold it together why because they got two separate visions going in two different directions so when you got two separate visions that's called division and as a home and as a family and as a married couple you have to have a singular vision you have to have the same vision when you have the same vision you're going to have the same spirit come on somebody say amen you're going to be committed to the same thing. Cut your arguments in half. Come on, somebody, say amen. You know what I'm talking about. When you're committed to the same vision, whether you're buying a home and you're setting money aside to buy that home, you don't have to argue about the budget because you've got a common vision. Say amen. So when you've got the same vision, you begin to operate under the same spirit and you go in the same direction. There's no arguing, there's no fighting, there's no quarreling. Why? Because a decision has been made. There's unity in the home because there's a common vision, a common spirit, and a common direction. So as you give to the Lord, I want to challenge you. To give and give having the same vision as a couple. You know, I talked about the ministry here at TC, and here's something that I wanted to say. And uh, I asked my wife to come on up here, and the worship team to come on up here. You know, my wife and I uh, serve. Uh, we 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 serve together. We serve the Lord together, and we've been married 16 years. 16 years, I heard a buddy of mine named Ruben Morris said, 16 years feels like only five minutes underwater. No, just kidding. That's Ruben Morris' joke. I'm giving him all the credit. That's not my joke. But here we are serving the Lord in church, right? Here we are hustling and giving it our all for Jesus, and we have full-time jobs. We're just like you. Did you know that? Same vision. Can somebody say amen? Here we are serving the Lord. We have full-time jobs, and God's called us to the ministry. God's called us to give. God's called us to serve. God's called us to give of our lives. Same vision, same spirit. Here we are serving the Lord, and we're the lead pastors for the English congregation, for the 11 o'clock congregation, the English ministries, serving the Lord. Same vision, same spirit, same direction. It's the only way we're able to do what we do. Same vision. Same vision. I love you, babe. Thank you. Thank you for loving me. And thank you for uniting in the vision. Amen. Amen. Why don't you worship team, get ready. Give my wife a hand clap. So here's what I'm asking you to do on November 20th. Here's what I'm asking you to do on November 20th to give a special offering. I'm asking you to give a special offering. 
I'm asking you to give to the heart revolution taking place right here at Templo Calvario. What do I mean by that? I'm asking you to give to the hearts that are being turned because the, the same way God turned your heart towards him is the same way God wants to turn the hearts of others. The same way you've seen people come here and commit their lives to Christ and get set free and get healed and their marriages blessed and restored and go through our champion of faith process and life group ministry and begin to serve in, in the ministry, not just in the church, but outside of the church. The same way you see the church expanded and influencing We've got Bible studies on Godinas High School. We've got Bible studies at Spurgeon High School. We've got Bible studies at Century High School. We're beginning to influence and impact at every level. God is, God is using this church in the same way God's turned your heart. God wants to turn the hearts of others. Give to the heart revolution. Give to the heart revolution. Number two, let me give you another reason to give. Here's another reason I want you to give. Give to the heart revolution, but also give as a sign and a symbol of your love for this house. Give as a sign and a symbol of your love for this house. The heart for the house. Give as a sign and symbol for, for, for the love for this house. You want to know why? I, 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 man, in my walk with the Lord, uh, I've understood something. God wants us, wants us to love the things that he loves. God wants us to love the things that he loves, and God wants us to love the way that God loves. And how many know Jesus gave his life on the cross, and Jesus, God is not asking you to do that. That's why God sent his only son so that we wouldn't have to. All I'm saying is give as a sign and a symbol of your love for this house, the house that God loves and the way that God loves by giving sacrificially. Giving sacrificially giving sacrificially. Number three, stand up with me today. I want you to give as a commitment to this house and I want you to join us. You know when, the, when Josh preached and talked to the people and shared with the people and challenged the people and people responded, Joshua shared, people responded, Joshua shared. You know what they did at the end of that? They made a covenant together. They made a pack. They made a promise. Do you realize that we are all the beneficiaries of that covenant? We are all the beneficiaries of that promise. We are all the beneficiaries of the leader challenging the people, the, the people responding and making a declaration and agreeing and coming together and joining Joshua when he said, me and my house will serve the Lord. And they stepped up and they said, and we will too. What? No, I'm just kidding. He probably stepped up and says, we will too, y que? No, I'm just kidding, just messing around. Well, I better stop while I'm ahead, man. Something, you know. Some of you might meet me in the parking lot. No, I'm just kidding. Please don't do it. I'm cool, I'm cool. I love you, man. I'm praying for you. Go ahead, worship team. Play that song. Play that song. Praise the Lord. So maybe, maybe you're a new Christian, man. And you're like, dude, you're hardcore, man. You're all in. I'm just getting started. I want to challenge you just to begin to tithe unto the Lord. That's a great place to begin. That's a, that's, a, that's a great place to begin. Just begin giving something and work your way up, brother. Maybe you've been at our, our, our church, man. You've been here a couple months, three months, six months, a year. And man, you're saying, brother, I'm, I'm going to stick around, man. God's up to something. God's doing something. You're absolutely right. I believe God's calling you to be a part of a movement, a heart revolution. It's not just a day or an event. It's a way of life. It's a way of life. Turning people's back, turning people's heart back to God. It's a way of life. I believe God's telling you, stay right here. I want to challenge you to begin to take the next step and begin to give begin to contribute begin to, to to make your statement known you and your house will serve the lord and you join and you're going to be a part of this house and you're going to call this this your this your house i want you to begin to give i want to challenge you to give and you know man if you're like me and you've been around forever i've been around since 1993 i'm still here what's up 
I met my wife in the youth ministry. She was in Bible school at LABI. I followed her back. 16 years. I've been blessed by this house. Everything I have is because of this house. God has worked in and through this house. And I'm here today standing on the ground that I'm standing on because the Lord gave it to this house and he allows me to be a part of it. So if you're from the house and you're part of our core, you're part of our committed, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you. Here's what I want to challenge you to do. You know, my, my wife and I, man, we work full time. We tithe unto the Lord. We give unto the Lord. We give a little extra over here, over there, and everywhere. We do everything we can. Because we're trying to love with the kind of love that, that God loves us. God's so generous. God has blessed us in so many ways. We cannot outgive God. I'm just blessed. Pastor Danny challenged us when he started this campaign, the Heart for the House campaign. And here's what he said. He says, man, we, need, we have a goal. We want to raise $100,000. Pastor Dan Jr. has talked about some of the projects. We talked about the parking lot. We talked about the third building. We talked. I see new carpet parking up here and there. I see a fence. I see all kinds of things we need to do, right? Pastor Dan Sr. challenged us to give $1,000 each. And I said, amen. Amen. Now for you, man, you may be saying, oh, brother, that's not even a lot of money. But well, well, whatever it is, whatever sacrifice means for you, man, that's your challenge. Join me. Join us. As we make a statement. Me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what I'm asking you to do. Join us. Join the heart revolution taking place right here, 2501 West 5th Street in Santa Ana, Templo Calvario Church. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap, everybody. Come on, let's worship the Lord together. You give love.